What's up, dude? Recently, I was doing some scrolling online and I came across this video from Jort's Kitchen where he threw down the most insane steak technique I've probably ever seen. So today, we're gonna have an absolutely epic time and recreate this revolver ribeye. And as always, there is no time to waste. Now let's go. Here I have a seven pound standing rib roast, meaning it is attached to the bone. It doesn't really matter if you purchase one that has the bone removed or not, but if you need to remove the bone like I am, just flip it over. And starting from the tail end of the rib roast, I'm just gonna slide in my knife and glide down along the bones to remove them. I'd have to be absolutely insane to throw away some amazing beef rib bones like this. You can season them up and cook them on the grill along with this revolver ribeye, or you could do something like roast them off and make a rich beef stock with them. The point is, don't ever throw them away. I also felt it necessary to take off the tail end of this rib roast so I can get a nice round shape from the rest of the cut. I'll start by dousing my rib roast with some Worcestershire sauce, or as I like to call it, anchovy water, which is one of the main ingredients in this sauce. I don't know if you knew that. This is gonna add some really rich umami flavor. And to keep things simple today, I'm just gonna be using some of this all-purpose barbecue rub that Guga sent me. I'm not affiliated with Guga in any way. I just wanna give it a shot. Of course, you could season it with whatever you wish. Salt and pepper would be absolutely fine. Rosemary salt, if you know, you know, is another great choice as always. After giving it a little slap, slap to make it a little bit more round. I'm just gonna lay down some butcher's twine. And I'll start by placing just two marrow bones over the twine and the rib roast on top of that. I'll then place two more marrow bones on either side of the rib roast and tie it up loosely. So I can leave a little bit of room to tuck in the rest of the bones, which is what I'm gonna do. It's no exact science at this point. We wanna just get them all in there. And once they're all roughly placed equally around the rib roast, I'm gonna start tightening this first string to keep them all held into place. I'll then just take a little bit of time to move these bones around and just make sure that they're spaced out nicely around the roast. At this point, it's looking awesome. I just need to secure everything down as best I can. To do that, I'm gonna add another four pieces of butcher's twine at different spots around the revolver ribeye to secure it down. And after a little help from my handy cameraman, Marcus, this beast of a creation was locked and loaded and ready to go outside to the rotisserie grill. Where is my trident? <laughs> 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 insert my rotisserie fork right through the center of this thing and there we have it my friends this is ready to go outside and cook and to do that today I'm just gonna be starting with some very large pieces of lump charcoal and after my recent collab with Guga I am now the proud owner of a grill blazer flame torch which is probably the funnest and quickest way you could ever light up some charcoal or lump charcoal if any of you are as crazy as me and feel the need for something like this in your life I can get you a 10% discount through the link down in the description but before lighting up the grill safety first ladies and gentlemen equip your helmet and after a fun time lighting up the lump charcoal with these amazing torches, it was time to get my rotisserie set up and begin cooking the auto-basting revolver rib roast. And I started by placing my meat roughly two and a half feet above the coals because at this point they were raging hot and I didn't want to risk burning anything. At this point, my primal urge to just stop and stare at meat cooking over a fire was very, very much activated because I seriously found myself just standing out here for about 15 minutes, basking in the amazing smells and admiring my creation. Now, I think it goes without saying this is just a very fun and cool way to cook a rib roast. There is no doubt about that. However, let me tell you the one major pro and the one major con I see with using this method. On the plus side, as it's rotating over the fire, the bone marrow is melting and dripping all over the meat, which is leaving some incredible bone marrow flavor onto the meat, as well as keeping it from doing any sort of drying out. The one con and negative side I found with using this method for rib roast is it's literally going to protect the meat from the heat because I had this thing over the fire for literally an hour and 45 minutes before it even hit 100 degrees Fahrenheit height internal, which just took a lot longer than I thought. Not that it's the end of the world, but it's definitely something to remember. One thing I tried to do to speed up the process was that as the coals were dying down, I kept lowering my rib roast closer to the flame. And once it hit 100 degrees Fahrenheit internal, it was time to take it inside to move on to phase two. If you've been looking for a quick, easy, and delicious way to improve your overall health, then I would make a serious recommendation that you try out Athletic Greens. And trust me when I say it's so much more than just greens. These days, it's hard to find an all-in-one product like this because it contains vitamins, minerals, probiotics, superfoods, and antioxidants. It's also very easy to take. Gone will be the days when you're fumbling through 10 different bottles of vitamins and supplements like I've been doing. You just take one scoop every day, mix it with water, shake it up, and drink it down. And with hints of pineapple, 
pineapple and vanilla, it honestly tastes good. You know, for me personally, I quit drinking coffee last year, so to have a product like Athletic Greens in my life that I can take easily in the morning has really helped boost and maintain my energy levels throughout the day without having these crazy caffeine spikes and crashes. And you know, recently in my life, I've been making a strong effort to prioritize my health and fitness. So I've been getting back into martial arts, practicing jiu-jitsu, practicing boxing, kickboxing, Muay Thai, and on those busy days when I'm working and training, Athletic Greens has been the perfect product to take in the morning to support me throughout the day. You can click my link down in the description to get a one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D3 plus K2 and five travel packs free with your first purchase. You can't put a price tag on your health, my friends, and now back to the video. And let's make our own version of Guga's Butter of the Gods. Because this steak is already so epic, we might as well take it to the next level. For Guga's recipe, he uses cured egg yolks, which if you have the time to pull off, I would definitely recommend doing. However, I'm gonna make up my own quick version today, and I'm gonna start by simply poaching some eggs. And I didn't really bother putting vinegar in the water right here because I'm just after a cooked yolk. And to achieve that, I'm just gonna let them simmer away in here for six minutes. At that point, I'll just remove them onto a plate and let them cool all the way down to room temp while I prepare the butter. By placing room temperature unsalted butter into a stand mixer fixed with a paddle attachment. Because to make this compound butter, we wanna start by whipping the butter and pushing a bunch of air inside of it. One amazing professional cooking tip I can leave with you that will pay dividends is again to light up this amazing torch and simply warm up the sides of the bowl so the butter will collapse in on itself. And magically with this one piece of knowledge, you'll never need to stop your machine from spinning and scrape it down with a spatula again. It's a great one. And after four minutes of whipping on medium high speed, I'm gonna stop and add shallots, parsley, parmigiano reggiano cheese, mold and salt, and some Sergeant Gilbert reporting for duty, which is just black pepper if that isn't obvious enough. And the last thing I'll add at this stage is our now cooled down egg yolks, which I'm just gonna crumble into the butter before returning to whipping. Guga also uses anchovy paste in his Butter of the Gods, which I don't have today, so I'm just gonna go ahead and use anchovy water, aka Worcestershire sauce. The only thing the butter is still missing is obviously the bone marrow, which is pretty darn important. And now that our rib roast had hit 100 degrees Fahrenheit internal, it was time to remove the bones. Upon doing this, I think you will notice that this steak is in desperate need of a real hard sear. However, before doing that, it was time to marry the marrow bones with the butter, and I'm really excited about this. To do this, just take a spoon and scoop out all that incredible bone marrow into the butter. And once it's all inside, all you need to do now is whip it again for about 30 seconds on medium speed. All that's left to do now is to lay down some plastic wrap and get your butter down before rolling it up into a nice cylinder shape by pinching on either end and pushing forward. And after chilling in the fridge, you'll be able to get a really nice slice of some incredible compound butter that's good on just about everything. All we need to do now is take our rib roast back outside and begin to sear it over the dying coals, which was now the perfect temperature to cook this meat without having to worry too much about flare ups or burning your meat in any way. And after about 15 minutes of mostly direct and some indirect heat here over the coals, it had hit a final internal temperature of 125 degrees Fahrenheit, which meant it was finally time just to give it one more 15 minute rest. And for the grand finale, I made a tower of bone marrow bones and placed the revolver ribeye on top. And as it sits up there as the glorious, valiant king of its own castle, it only needed one more thing, and that was its crown. And much better than gold and jewels, its crown consisted of that butter of the gods compound butter. And after one final blast from the flame torch to wrap up this incredible cook, it was finally time to give it a taste. And upon slicing into this rib roast to reveal its true glory, we had a beautiful medium rare perfection. Is this method a little expensive? Yes. Does it require time and equipment? Yes. Is it one of the best pieces of meat I've ever put in my mouth? Again, yes. Oh my god. Oh my god. I'm not sure I've ever had a piece of meat in my life that has more flavor than this. You can dip the butter off the top of this steak. Dip it on. Oh yeah, there you go. Oh my god. That's great. Until next time, you know I love you and I'm out. Ew, ew.